Now, tell me about this lesson. Let, let's probably start about what motivated you to write it, well, to teach this particular lesson. And let's start from there. Okay, actually, I was motivated by the challenges we are coming across as educators across, across the country. Right. Uh, because uh, now and then, um, if you want to find out why our learners are underperforming in mathematics, yes, uh, you find that uh, one of the main reasons is yes. the lack of resources. Right. So that uh, has been a problem or a challenge to me that actually what one needs to do to avoid or to overcome this um, challenge. Yes. So that's what I normally do. I take everything, be it in the class or in the ground or whatever in my surrounding, right. and use it as, as a teaching aid in my class. Now let's go through your, 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 your lesson. What was it about? Actually, it was about the introduction of uh, graphs. And then as when they see graphs, they must realize that uh, graphs it's a, it's, 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 it's a way of communicating. Okay. They say much to us mathematicians. Okay. It's our language, actually. Yes. Mm -hmm. let's, let's look at this particular lesson. What, what was the title? Giving meaning to functions. Giving meaning general. to functions. OK. And also uh, making sense of the most commonly used variables in maths. Okay. That is x and y. Because yes. whenever you yes. see maths, people just think of x and y. <laughs> Learners will understand very well in future why right. are we using variables mostly in mathematics. Okay. And again, why are we drawing graphs in mathematics? Right. But I'm using only the parabola as okay. an example. Great. John, now le let's come to the, to the core lesson that you, t yeah, that you taught. What is it that you did? I grouped the learners in groups of five and six. Okay. Then in each group, I gave them 16 tiles. Right. And each group, I gave them a string okay. of the same length. Right. Then tiles of the same number, they were all 16, and the string. Right. So I just gave them the instruction that they must take their string and do as if they are I, I, it was a fence and they are making up a garden right so they just quickly in whatever form they want to do right. their garden then they they, they paste that, that on the actually uh, along uh, the fence on the plane sheet yeah yes. i give them also the plane sheet to serve as, uh, as our ground okay so this is fencing so they they did it in whichever way the other instruction is after you have done your, your fence, right. then you have to take the, the tiles and right. put them inside okay. and see how many feet. By the way, they all have the string yes. of the same size. Yes. So there, after that, I found different um, gardens with different sizes. That's For instance, right. uh, one of them was this, of which can accommodate 16 tiles. So can you see this fits? Yes. All the, all the 16, 16 feet. Yes. And the yeah. string is still the same. The right. others had their fans like this and only, say, I mean, a seven could yeah. fit. Fit in that. By the way, they are still using the, the same, same string, resource. Yes. So can you see? Now this one is very small. It's yes. a waste of resource. Right. Others had big gardens. Others had small Smaller. gardens okay. using the same material. Yes. So without a, a changing the length, you can get different things. Right. So I had one whereby the, I then considered only this side. Right. We were to plot this side against the, the total. Okay. By the way, the total was representing the area. In this case, for instance, I'll say one, two, three, four as my x. Right. So it will, my x will be four, right. my y will be 16. Okay. Y is the total number. Okay. So when I we come to this one, this my x will be seven. One, right. two, three, four, five, six, seven. seven yes. And the area, how many feet? Right. Still seven. Yes. So I plotted all the different outcomes of the learners okay. such that at the end when you plot them, you get something like a parabola right. with the highest point at four. Right. Because what uh, this was the highest number it was of the, the number of tiles in so the so then they came up area. with the parabola yes. without knowing what the parabola is so on the board i've put mine 
rectangle. Yes. And without measuring it, because I I, I, I wasn't using the wood or whatever. Good. But we assume that the length is the same as the one we, they were using. Yes. And theirs was accommodating seven tiles, its length. Yes. It was 16 units. Right. I didn't want to use centimeters because we are not no, to use no. rulers and the like. We are right. using the, uh, the length of a one tile as my unit. Right. So I said, okay, from here to surround this, it's 16. Right. So I don't know my... Mm, this breath, yes. I let it be Y okay. and this be X. Yes. So one thing for sure is if I add all around, yes. this will also be, be Y another and this y will and be that X. X. Then yes. I'm going to have my 2X plus yes. 2Y being 16 because after all I know the wool it must give me 16. Yes. So that's where we started seeing. And by the way, I cannot do anything with this. It's no. one equation. That's right. Two variables. Yes. So we cannot solve it. No. Then what we can do is then we must at least express one variable in terms of the, the other. other. Yes. So that's what I I, I, I did. Yes. So um, I, I said, okay, I c in this case, I can make y the subject of the formula. So yes. it's going to be 2y equals to 16 minus 2x. Yes, so when right. I divide across by 2, yes. I get y, y equals equal to, to 8, 8 minus, minus x. x. Yes. So then I came back and removed this and, and put replaced it with uh, 8, 8 minus, minus x. x. Then I was happy it was one variable. Yes. So by the way, the area a formula is what they know that it's length times but breadth. But breadth. Yes. It's the area. Right. So now we are happy our length is x. Right. Then our breadth is 8 minus x, which right. is the area. Right. So the area, when you remove these brackets, you get 8x x minus x squared, squared equals to a. Yeah. Then this explain. By the way, we, we were having the parabola yes. after using the outcome. Right. Then I start to relate saying, okay, look, now this is the equation of the parabola. Yes. We start with something that we can see, yes. tangible, yes. that we can practicalize, right. and we move from there to more abstract things. Brilliant. Brilliant. Then now they no longer see X and Y as just the no numbers, numbers or whatever. Yes, or letters. Then they know that they come to our rescue at one point. Yes. Now, uh, if I, uh, we look at the graph, they see therefore that it's giving us the biggest. Right. And when you look at this graph, I then start to introduce to them the concept of the turning point. This is right. our turning yes. point. Yes, yes. And at the turning point, it's That's showing us, it's where we are going to get maximum, the maximum height. Yes. So hmm. there is no one who can get the garden bigger than the one who made one side four. four. They couldn't wait. Anyone w wanted to know how to get the turning point directly from right. here because I can see this turning point is useful. Yes. So when I come the following day to teach the turning point, everybody wants to know that yes. because these are the things that they did practically and in they class. know that turning yes. point has got a meaning in future in yes. practical life yes it makes yes. sense so what advice would you give say to fellow teachers at this moment in time number one colleagues must make sure that they participate in the professional organizations yes then attending their workshops and conferences or whatever it is you, critical you will always be on board yes like now we are working with this uh, new curriculum statement right so you can not just rely to the workshops organized by the department of education right. then you'll be left behind, behind. and okay. you are going to struggle in your teaching and you'll end up being frustrated so also to consult as many books as, as possible. possible i think that basically covers it all lastly yes. lastly i want to challenge them also to encourage them to participate in competitions right yeah they are contributing towards the growth of one's uh, actually they are participating to one's development yes right john thank you very much we do appreciate a great deal and i'm sure the fellow teachers there that have been attentive uh, and uh, listen to, to your pr uh, presentation, have enjoyed this. Thank you very much.